All right, so somebody asked me recently, somebody in the mentoring group, what should I do in terms of my coding career? Should I become a freelancer? Should I start a business? Should I go work for somebody because it's secure? So in this video, I'm gonna give you a few things to consider with regards to choosing what path you're gonna take with your coding career. At the end of the day, it really comes down to your personality. So what career you take and how you monetize, how you turn your coding into cash, money, Again, as I said earlier, it depends on your personality. So let's consider a few things. Let's start with getting a job. There are pros and cons to everything. Getting a job is no exception. But with getting a job, you are presented with the illusion of no risk. So why do I call it an illusion? The illusion is that once you get a job, you get paid and you're, you're cool. Now, this is general, generally the case. But the thing about getting a job is that you can get fired. Fortunately, because we are in the tech sector, and if you position yourself properly, meaning you, you learn uh, to be a good coder, good employee, somebody, you, somebody that people can count on, chances of you getting fired are very, very, very low. There are some exceptions, but it's very low. So first of all, becoming an employee is not necessarily super safe, but Compared to starting a business and compared to freelancing in the early stages, working for somebody is safer. So what do I mean? When you first get a job and you get past the uh, preliminary uh, stage where they check you out, make sure you're not terrible, where they kick you out after three months. But once you get past that three-month uh, hurdle, trials period, and you're doing good work, chances of you being fired uh, are very low. And in terms of stability, in terms of income and so forth, yes, getting a job is going to be more stable initially versus doing freelancing and especially starting your own business. I say initially because as you go further on down the track, meaning time passes by, you'll be more secure in your job, but not much more secure than you were after you got past the probation period. Whereas with freelancing and starting your own business, it's a whole different thing. So let me jump into that quickly. So when you freelance, it's typical in the first year, you're going to have ups and downs and bumps in the road. Not everybody's created equal. We have people in our program who have all kinds of jobs, but just need the skills. We have other people who have all kinds of skills, but can't get the jobs as a freelancer. I'm talking about freelancing jobs or gigs. We'll use gig to differentiate between working for somebody and freelancing. So when you first start freelancing, the gigs will typically come here and there, and you're gonna to have to build up what I call reputation. Well, your reputation. You gotta build up your presence out there uh, before you start finding a steady stream of income. So the first few months, you may have one or two gigs, and then, then all of a sudden you got three or four, and then down to a zero, and then a month passes by, you got nothing and more. So when you're freelancing, you're gonna to have to have more tolerance for risk. Number one, because especially in the early days, you have that uncertainty and that inconsistency in, certain, in terms of the uh, number of jobs you're going to get. But over time, when you become a freelancer, over time, you're going to have a nice stable of clients, like a stable of horses. You have many of them. And because you have many clients, you're much more secure because if one person gets angry at you, one client... If they fire you, whatever, you have 10 others, right? No big deal. On the other hand, if you don't like a client, you can fire them if you have 10 others, right? So there is that freedom in freelancing uh, in terms of who you can work with, who you don't want to work with, in terms of the type of work you want to do. When you get well-established as a freelancer, you'll be able to pick and choose the jobs you want to do, the technologies you want to work with. Initially, when you do get, get a job, not a gig, but a job working for somebody as an employee, it is more stable. So that's a good thing to get into a job if you don't like the risk, especially in the first uh, year or two as a freelancer that you would have. You get a job, you get your, t your paycheck every two weeks, whatever it is, and you're good. Whereas freelancing, you gotta have those bumps in the roads. And so you have to have more risk tolerance as a freelancer. You also have to be more self-disciplined. You have to be able to get up and create something out of nothing. 
whereas with a job, you get into a job, if you meet the requirements, they'll tell you, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to code this, you're going to code that, you're going to do this. You know, So it's kind of, you're led by the nose when you're working for somebody, generally speaking. When you start your own business, it's more like freelancing, but it's even harder, where, again, these are typical averages, there's always exceptions to every rule, so... You know, don't in the comments say, I had a friend who started his company, he made a lot of money in the first year. That happens, but usually typical business takes three to five years to become profitable. Uh, in the ed tech space, you're looking at seven to ten. This is normal. And you just have to have, again, the risk tolerance, the ability to take risk. At the same time, because the money will be inconsistent in the first uh, couple of years as a freelancer or especially starting your own business from scratch, where you're building up a website or web app or something or a mobile app or something, you're going to have to have much more discipline in terms of your finances. You're going to be able to save better, manage your money better. Uh, you should have some FU money in the bank. If you don't know what that is, look at the links below. So personality type. First and foremost, whether you choose a job or whether you go freelance or, or start your own business, that is really about risk tolerance. Can you, handle the, can you handle the ups and downs? Can you take that risk? A lot of people can't. You know, on the flip side, when you go work for somebody, you're told what to do, when to show up, what code you're going to write, what tools you're going to use, what are the protocols and the um, practices you're going to use at the place of work. This is all going to be dictated for you. Some people love that. It's great. Other people don't like that. As a freelancer or you own your own SaaS-based business, as an example, you set all that up, which could be daunting for others and other people like that. So another quality personality trait is the ability to be self-starting when you are a business owner or a freelancer. you got to be able to get up out of bed and set things up for yourself, structure things yourself. That's another quality or skill you got to have. So if you are more of an independent person like that, going to work for somebody is not going to be your cup of, cup of tea. You're not going to like it because you're going to be, I don't want to do it this way. I want to do it that way. And uh, so that's where the freelancing comes in. But there's always pros and cons, right? One of the things I tell people when you go work for somebody and they happen to be using a technology or they have some practices and workflows in place you don't agree with, whatever, your job is not to um, to necessarily tell them what to do especially when you're first starting out, you're a beginner, you're a noob, be a noob, humble noobs are smart noobs. So you got to be a humble, smart noob, and you got to not try to impose your thinking on things. You can suggest, you say, hey, boss, or hey, team leader, hey, colleague, I was looking at this tech, I think it might be better for these reasons. What do you think? And that's it. When you work for somebody, you do not call the shots. And you shouldn't take it personally if somebody doesn't want to do what you want to do. They may be wrong, and you're right, or they may be right, and you're wrong because you're a noob, right? So who knows? Again, depending on your point of view and your personality, you may find it uh, good that you don't choose the tech. You don't want those choices to be fall on your shoulders, and it could be that you find it bad because you want to choose the tech. As you can see in this video, whether you become a freelancer, start your own SaaS-based software business, or work for somebody, comes down to personality. It comes down to personality many a times. Maybe you like the idea of becoming a freelancer, but maybe you just don't have good sales skills. In that case, you can partner with somebody perhaps. Or maybe you want to start a SaaS business. You like the idea of it, but you don't have an idea for SaaS. As I said, if you're going to start a SaaS software as a service, you're going to have to find a use case. You're going to have to find a problem that has not been solved yet with, with software since we're, in, we're involved in coding here. And that is something you find by, being, by having knowledge of the industry in question. The coding and the technology implementation is just secondary to it. Figuring out what the problem is is the tricky part most of the time. So how do you figure this out? Well, what I would suggest is that, well, what we do in my mentoring program where you learn how to code fundamentally, fundamentally so you get pro-level code, so coding skills, so you can get in the door. Then we have people build a demo site, and then we have people go out and do two to three real projects for people on your own. And, you know, of course, in the mentoring group, you got the support of the mentoring, uh, me and other people around, of course. But 
by doing this, you're going to figure out how you like to work, whether you want to work for one corporation, one company or not, whether you want to freelance or not, whether you might like to start your own business. You can sit there all day contemplating and coming up with these ideas in your head, but it's like anything else in life. You have to really get into it, do it for real, and then you're going to really understand whether or not you want to work for a large corporation or you don't. You know, so my suggestions to you, if you're watching this and you're learning to code right now or you're thinking about it, once you have your basics in your coding, your fundamental skills, as I call them, fundamental skills means you can work in a commercial environment as an entry-level developer, because like so many other professions out there, you really learn the craft of code in the doing, in the building a real thing. So what I try to do in my mentoring program is I try to get people into a company, into real world jobs as quickly as possible. Some people get jobs, some people freelancing, some people working on a SaaS, some people, they ultimately want to freelance, but they feel a little uncomfortable about it, so they figure, oh, I'm just going to go work for a web design firm or a software design or you know, whatever, a mobile development firm for six months a year and see how it goes and take it from there. All viable. Again, all these decisions are based on your likes and dislikes, your schedule. Like, for example, you may be tight on cash and you may need to get a job right away. So you get a job, make some money on the side, you work on side projects, start building up your skills, your reputation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe you have a SaaS idea, but you know it's going to take a good six, eight months to get the first beta or alpha out, really. And so you need cash flow, so you work. You work, you work on the side on the SaaS when you work for a company, even if you're doing coding that you don't necessarily like, you'll learn a lot. All right, I hope this helps. Uh, consider the risk aversion thing. Consider the money thing. Consider how you like to work. That's another thing. I'll, I'll add, add this last thing in here. When you're freelancing, especially in the beginning, you're alone. So you got to be able to work alone initially. If you're starting a SaaS, you might be alone unless you get a partner or something. Or unless you get backing some big money. But typically, it's, it's more of a lonely game, a solo game when you're freelancing and you are um, setting up a startup. Whereas when you go work for somebody, you're going to work with other people. You're going to work with other people typically, although with COVID, where you might be working from home, different thing. But nonetheless, you have contact with other people. So that may be important to you. You may want to have that social contact. I don't know. It depends on you. So those are the factors. Risk aversion your time frame, whether or not you can afford to spend more time getting the freelance gigs or starting a business financially, uh, whether you like to work with other people or alone, you know, whether you like to create a structure for yourself or whether you prefer to go to a company where they provide the structure for you. So it's largely a personality, emotional thing. If you're a top flight employee, you can make a lot of money. If you're a top flight freelancer, you can make a lot of money or a lot more money. Uh, and if you own a SaaS, you can make the ultimate money, of course. My top mentee, he's, uh, he's got a company that's uh, doing fantastic uh, valuation, uh, billions. So it depends what you want to do. It depends on what you're looking for. It depends what makes you comfortable. The money may seem very happy, may seem very cool in the freelance game or the SaaS game, but that may take you a few years to get there. You know, I hope this helps. Uh, take the steps I suggested, as I have people in my mentoring program do. Get your fundamental skills up to speed so you can get it, so you can go out there, do simple jobs, and then from there you're really going to figure out what you, what you, what you want to do personally, because everybody's different. All right, hope that helps. I'm Uncle Steph.